Hey everyone, it's the interview queen Alicia Toot here and it is my absolute pleasure to welcome you all to my interview with the pink dream, Alex Garcia. Hi! Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing over there? I'm doing well. Like, <laughs> again, despite the circumstances, I think, I think we're hanging in there. Right, that's what matters. We're taking it day by day. We're trying to kick every day's butt and as long as we do that at the end, all is well. <laughs> yes. Exactly. <laughs> I have to say, I'm so envious of your hair. I've always wanted to dye mine, and I haven't taken the plunge being like a natural brunette. I'm so scared, but you're rocking it. It looks so good. Thank you. And yeah, like I was always like, I was, my hair was always like black or brown or dark I brown, know. or like I would only like get highlights. So, like, when I actually like took the path of like, let's just go all in and do the pink hair, like it was really scary for me, but it's a long process, but I, I've, I love it now, so thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, of course, of course, because of the, because of the pandemic, pandemic, shows are put on hold. Many of us kind of had to take some downtime for once. So how was that for you, and how were those past few months spent when you weren't in the ring? It was a super hard adjustment because I'm someone who kind of – bases like how I'm doing performance wise or career wise based on like okay like I'm booked and busy things are going well and so when everything just stops you have to like really mentally convince yourself and tell yourself that the reality of it is is that the world has kind of stopped right now it's not you um and so it was just really hard to kind of come up with a plan to be like okay, what are the things I can control versus the things I can't control? And so you're just like coming up with like all these different ways and just trying to be like, okay, I want to be ready. Like once the opportunities do start coming back or once the world starts up opening up again, like I want to be ready for that. Were you able to train during those first few months or was it kind of like riding a bike again for you and you really had to, you know, let your body readjust that first bump must have really hurt. So which scenario was it for you coming back? Oh, yeah. Um, rings were closed everywhere. So I was in Houston at the time when everything started shutting down and I know we weren't allowed to go to the gym until slowly when gym started opening back up in Texas like we took all the necessary precautions and only a certain amount of people could be in there but it wasn't like real like how our training usually goes so it's more of like let's just get in there and like stay warm and stuff but um so at least I had that going for me a little bit but definitely like the first time you do an actual match after that long break that's when I think I was like Okay, like I'm gonna have to readjust <laughs> and do this again because doing an actual match, like, is just it's it takes more of a toll on your body, even though you're like, how in that short amount of time am I hurting for weeks now compared to like training consistently every day? <laughs> Well, I'm glad that we were talking about matches and that was brought up because something fans are able to enjoy recently are your appearances on AEW. So how psyched were you when that opportunity came about and you knew you kind of had your foot in the door and you'd be able to be on the show not once, but now multiple times? I think it was a little bit of, it was a little bit of a shock because I really kind of had to again, like when all that stuff was shutting, like everything was shutting down and all these opportunities and like big things planned this year were like taken away. I was like, I have to like face the facts that maybe I'm not going to take like the steps that I wanted to this year and like accomplish the goals that I wanted to. And it's funny because like one of my big goals um, for 2020 was to have my AEW debut. And so when they finally contacted me, I, I think it was like, okay, like I wasn't even expecting that. Like it just kind of came out of nowhere. So that was really exciting and motivating. And now it's, it's, I think that's kind of where I've like started to get my momentum a little more again. Cause I'm just like, okay, like things are starting again. Like let's get back into game mode because I think now it's like, there are things that I can accomplish this year that, I thought we're going to be on hold. So it's just like, okay, like, let's get this done. 
Well, it's super exciting because we never know when so many of our friends or people are going to appear on that show until there's like a graphic or you hear it behind the scenes and you can finally celebrate once it's up. So um, fingers crossed, you know, we'll be seeing a lot yes. more of you on Congrats once again. Yes, thank you. Of course. So I know when we first got on here, one of the first things I mentioned was the awesome pink hair, uh, but you are the pink dream. You have everything in that realm from all of your social media to your gear. So uh, when did this whole obsession with all things pink come to be? And how did you know, like, hey, I really want this to be my thing? I think it was me almost my entire life. And it really just <laughs> it wasn't like I wasn't aware of it until I started wrestling. And it was, I was just all scatterbrained as like, how do I want my gear to be? I don't know what to do. Who am I? And like, everyone was kind of like, are you serious? Like you wear pink to training every day. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, like I would walk in with my like pink training shoes and my pink training bag and like all that. And they're like, um, like if you don't wear pink, I don't believe anything that you're going to do. And I was like, <laughs> yeah pink i'll do pink and um so happens that like so one of like my favorite like diamonds is called the pink dream and it was actually the background on my phone and i was like oh my gosh like is this right been right in front of my face the entire time and that's what i kind of like loved about how it all came about because i it was just sitting there the entire time it's happens with like a lot of people you're like overthinking over analyzing and like what can I do here what should I do for this and it's like it's right in front of your face because it's you you know it's cool that it all kind of just aligns so easily like it's amazing yeah. like for me the whole interview queen thing a fan hashtag it once the next thing you know like it's on t-shirts like it just takes yeah. that one for it to click and you're like oh my gosh this is great so the fact that yours came so organically and um, that's really cool that it's such a simple but like perfect little uh, story for it all and I love that like even like what you're saying with like the interview queen it's like people people see who you are and so it's like you're like oh that is who I am why didn't I say that <laughs> <laughs> right you got to embrace those those little compliments and the cool things that come your way yeah. and the next thing you know it's it's what you're known for <laughs> yeah <laughs> You've definitely been kicking so much butt as you've not only been wrestling for AEW recently, but you have been wrestling for a couple of years, already having been in places like Reality of Wrestling, um, in the States, to stardom in Japan, all the way to in Mexico with CMLL. So uh, when you first began, did you kind of think that things would pick up so quickly for you and you'd see your name in all these different really big places already? Absolutely not. Like... <laughs> Like, my debut, I didn't even have gear yet. All I had were wrestling boots. And so I wore, like, this Victoria's Secret athletic wear outfit. Like, and I my debut match was, like, in front of less than 10 people, like, in a parking lot. And literally about five months later, I got the email. Because um, I'm just, like, slowly trying to be, like, okay, like, let me start to, like, wrestle a little more, but I'm scared out of my mind, and, like, I don't want to go out there and suck, so it's, like, you're starting to wrestle, but you're just, like, in your head, like, it's, I'm lucky to get a booking right now, <laughs> and, oh. um, like, five months later, I got the email from Stardom, and I, I thought it was, like, a prank, like, I was, like, this is spam, like, I just didn't believe it, and so spam. when... <laughs> <laughs> and then like their like official Twitter handle like followed me and I was like is this really them and then it was like how did this happen like because it's just like stardom I was like that's gonna be like years down the road if that even happens like it's it's such a prestigious company like known worldwide for women's wrestling it's like oh like Okay, like back up. Like you want me to come to act like to wrestle there, not just like to, like come hang out. <laughs> but you know, it's it's been really good, and I think that it it has made me like grow a lot. And I get so scared sometimes about like some of these like opportunities because it's like getting thrown out there so early. You're out there free for judgment from all, and it's like I'm getting exposed or like whether good or bad but it's like do these people know that it's like I'm I'm figuring it out still and it's like I think that's what's kind of been like exciting too is like being able to be on some of these like grand stages so early is like 
everyone is a part of like my growth. Like I didn't just get thrown in there when it's like, okay, you're ready. It's kind of like, you're getting thrown in there because we know you can do it and ready or not, like, this is how you're going to get it. So it's, it's made me grow like so much. And I've just, I love being in uncomfortable situations because I know that I'm growing from it. And so I feel like my whole career has been scary and uncomfortable situations. So like, I take that as a good thing. (laughs) Well, there's something about you I definitely picked up on, not only in this conversation, but just from following you online for a while. And it's just that you really do have this outgoing positivity and outlook. So have you always kind of been a fairly positive person and very bubbly in that sense? Or did that come because something happened? Because even hearing you talk about things now, you're saying, you know, like, it's just been thrown into situations. I just take it like it comes. And Some people would be like scared out of their minds and just quit, you know, but you have yeah. to push through, especially in wrestling, as we know. But um, has that always kind of been your mentality? Um. I don't think it's always been my mentality, but it's it's kind of like what you have to do or whatever business or career you're in is going to eat you up. And it it kind of like keeps you from staying like content with things. And like you have to see, I try to really see like the positives and good things that can come from something. Like even I my worst critic and no one is more tough on myself than I am on myself and so anything of hearing things from a bad match or like what people think of me online I'm already thinking about that times 20. Sometimes it is hard to always stay positive and have that outlook because people online at times like they can really suck especially online where we have to be the most active right now so for you what would you say is one of the weirdest or most bizarre comments you have read about yourself online? Um, okay, so one that's always, it's not really, like, weird or anything, but one that's always, like, stuck with me is so, like, when I was at Stardom, like, um, I had my one-year wrestling anniversary there, so I was less than a year in, and, of course, a lot of people, like, watch those, the Stardom shows, like, if, if you're a fan of that, and there was, like, one blog, and, like, someone was, like, the green dream like not the pink dream she's more of like the green dream and like I actually like thought that was kind of funny because I was like he's kind of (laughs) right but it was I don't know and I just like always like I think of that and I kind of like laugh because I'm just like well it's like I am new like I don't know what to say hilarious i mean like you gotta give them credit it's a good play on words but at the same time you want to like show up at their doorstep and be like really bro and be like yeah like i'm green but i'm green in japan (laughs) (laughs) well the last thing i wanted to bring up is the fact that on my show i not only interview wrestlers like yourself but also musicians so if you could have one artist create some entrance music for you who would you love to see do that I I would have to say Demi Lovato. Okay. Yeah. Just, I don't know. She just has, like, on every album, like, that one hit song where I'm just, like, I'm going to jam this all the time. And so on the indies, like, I use um, Confident by her. Um, And I just feel like it's, like, yeah. Like, everything (laughs) she's saying is me. And, um... I don't know, like, I'll, I'll, like, watch so many of, like, her interviews and stuff, and I I just feel, like, such a connection with her, so I'm just like, yeah, I'm like, Demi, make me some music. Well, we'll have to take her in this, and who who knows what'll happen. We'll have to see if we can make some magic. (laughs) Yeah, I need to work more, so then, like, she'll be like, yeah, I'm gonna make that girl an entrance song. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, I want to say thank you so, so much for taking the time for hopping on here. It's been awesome finally having you on the show. So thank you. Yes, thank you. I appreciate it. I know I haven't seen you since like in New York for WrestleMania when you did the um, Bullet Club party. Yeah, it's been such a long time. So hopefully it's over a year. Oh, my God. Can you believe that's over a year? That's insane. Yeah. Like, time I know. Plus. <laughs> <laughs> it's wild. Well, Fingers crossed we'll get back to some kind of normal. I'll see you. Uh, But thank you so much. And to everyone watching, be sure to go check out everything Alex has to offer because there's so much that uh, the Pink Dream brings to the table. And visit alishatoot.com for more exclusive interviews and features. Bye, everyone.